This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Yeah, pretty remarkable. Let's uh, let's talk about SummerSlam. John Stewart and Mick Foley are going to open up the show together. Uh, Stewart's going to want Foley as his backup because he says he's going to confront Brock Lesnar because he's mad that he broke the Undertaker streak. And Foley said he wouldn't have come here if he thought he was supposed to be John Stewart's backup because he too was afraid of Brock Lesnar. And then of course Stewart pushes. I thought you were fearless. I saw you fall off the big cage. Blah blah blah. Were you a fan of involving celebrities as sort of like hosts of shows like John Stewart here? Well, John Stewart, I was because he was so respectful and knowledgeable of our business backstage. I mean, for him to know who I was told me he had been a wrestling fan for a long time and to be respectful and come up and uh, address you and shake your hand and tell you how happy he was to be there. Those kind of guys. Uh, yes, I was, I was very happy that they were a part of our product because, you know, they knew that they were there to add to the show. They weren't the star of the show. And John Stewart was one of those guys, very humble, very respectful. And, uh, you know, just a good guy. But then John Stewart comes in with a chair, pauses for a while and then hits Cena in the gut. Then puts the chair on the ground and Rollins gives Rollins gives Cena a pedigree on the chair for the pin. And Rollins, uh, Meltzer would say, Rollins comes across here like he's the best wrestler in the world with his performance here. Fans were chanting, thank you, Stuart, for causing Cena to lose four and a half stars. I love the match. I hated the John Stewart thing. And the explanation we would get later was he didn't want Cena breaking Ric Flair's record of world title reigns. What'd you think of the match? What'd you think of the finish? Uh, yeah, I don't, John Stewart being involved in the finish after those guys have went out and performed at the level that they had and worked as hard as they had worked to me seems mighty anticlimactic. Um, I don't know why you couldn't have after a match like that and the story that you have, why you couldn't have had just Seth go over. Right. Who do you hurt? When, I, when you've got performers like that and they're two top guys and certainly as, as hard as John has been pushed over the years and yep, the, the big wins that he's had, all that investment in John, it's not going to kill John Cena off to get beat by Seth Rollins. I'm sorry, it's just not. And if it did kill him off, it would have meant that he wasn't over anyway. One victory, if it kills you off, you you were just being propped up anyway. You weren't really over. So I think after all that, you could have had Seth go over uh, and no one would have been damaged. Let me ask, do you think that creative feels the need to involve John Stewart because they do have a big celebrity like this. Do you think maybe Stewart says, Hey, I want to do something. And they felt pressure to involve him somehow, or is this just a scapegoat to, uh, we're going to have seen a lose, but wink, wink, not really. Uh, I don't know. Conrad, to be honest with you, it's, when they have those discussions, I don't know if they just admit we want to get the star power out there to add to the match. Um, you know, I don't know if, if that comes into the conversation or if somebody, if Cena needs an out or, or, but if they're clearly cheering Seth anyway and boo and John anyway, I'm back to that reaction. You know, I don't care if they're screaming pro or con, if everybody is invested in that match and in the finish at the end, you did the right thing. If people don't react, then there's a, there's a reason. And there's probably a couple of reasons and they're all bad. So I think you, you're looking at, do you walk away in every single match that you have, somebody has to get over. That's the oldest rule of thumb. Somebody got to get over in that match. So you got to ask 
who actually got over? Was it Seth? Was it, you know, the star that you have coming down on the end? Was it a combination of two? I mean, who actually really got over during the deal? And if somebody got over, then it worked. I also want to ask, you know, this is title versus title. You know, you go back to WrestleMania six when the Intercontinental Champion took on the world champion. Granted, that was Hulk Hogan. That's the main event. It goes on last. Here we've got the title being defended sort of in the middle of the show to make room for Brock Lesnar and Undertaker. How do you feel about that? Sometimes a given match. The old school me would said the world champion goes out at the end of the night every night, period. Right. Through seeing the evolution of the business and things get switched around and and having so many matches on a card and all these different variables that are out there, sometimes a match is bigger than the world title. If it's a personal angle, I would have said when the streak was going, the Undertaker streak, it was thought of as the main event more than whoever was in the world title match. I think the streak was more important than that. Just myself. Right. I thought, I thought that's how strong the streak was. Uh, after he lost it, they lost some of the luster, but I think you got to look at who had the most heat, you know, who was selling tickets, who was driving, you know, who was going to drive that pay-per-view, what would get the most out of the promotion, what is the feature thing that you're going to say as our main event? Because on any given night, as loaded with talent as they were and they are, you could have any any of three or four matches which were qualified for the main event. Just depends. So I, I don't agree that this match went on too early. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.